So push down through your feet from the core of the pelvis. And big inhale, stretch up. Exhale, hands to your sides. So it's a really simple movement, just coordinating breath and movement. Exhale, hands to your sides. Big inhale, it's a good way to wake up in the morning anyway. And exhale. And again, inhale, pushing down into your feet. And exhale. We'll do one more. So you want to feel the soles of your feet. You want to feel that extension from the pelvis into the earth. And exhale. Now we'll add the bowing forward. So we go inhale. And then as you exhale, you're going to purposely bend your knees, stick your butt out, and touch down. So you want to bend your knees as much as you need to to touch the ground. Then inhale, look up, flatten your back or stick your butt out, lift your head, and then exhale, round and soften. And inhale, using your legs, come all the way up. So that's not a back, a low back thing, that's a leg thing. Exhale, hands to your sides. Okay, so inhale, arms come up. Exhale, bend your knees, bow, touch down. Inhale, look up like you're arching your back. Exhale, round your back. And then inhale, come all the way up, 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 up. Push into your legs and exhale, hands to your side. So two more times. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bow. Bending the knees. Knees stay as wide as your feet. Inhale, look up. Exhale, this is teaching you how to use your legs. So as you come up, push into your heels, use the back of your legs and exhale. This is a good exercise just for people who have to lift things. Inhale, come up. Exhale to bow. Inhale, look up. Exhale, bow again. Inhale, come all the way up. Okay, so that's our little beginning warm-up exercise. Now, we're going to do some arm kidney warm-up. Take your feet outer hip distance apart. You could turn your toes out a little bit, bend your knees, and we're just turning side to side the upper body. So the lower body might follow, but the main action right now is on the rib cage. Once you get warmed up, start to let your arms go, and your arms will start to flap the, your low back. So you're whapping your low back. It's a nice, easy kidney warm-up. That's your kidneys. You're hitting back there, maybe. And it starts to get the breath going without you even realizing, too. Relax the top of your shoulders. You're just spinning around this midpoint, the central axis from the floor of the pelvis up through the crown of the head. Feet are sturdy. They're not moving too much. Your knees aren't moving too much. And you keep going. And a lot of these exercises, we do just a little bit longer than you might want to. And that's the point of having a class and having a teacher is to push yourself into these just slightly uncomfortable places where hopefully there's a little growth, a little expansion in the body, breath, mind, and enough. Okay, good. Now, coming back to hip distance, when we do this in the studio, we often have a circle between our feet, um, like a plastic Pilates circle. You can do this with a yoga block. If you have one, you could put it between your ankles but you don't need anything, right? So you could just have air and that works just fine. Okay, if you have something to hug into, grab it, right? And, and uh, totally optional. Uh, so feet are hip distance apart, about. Turn your heels into slightly, toes out just a little bit. Bring your arms up. This is a foot warm up, uh, ankle warm up, balance warm up. And we're gonna come up on our toes. So we're lifting the heels way up. Bend your knees out over your toes. So I'm sitting low in my knees. And then I reach my heels down and come up. I'm trying to keep, I'm going to show you from the side. I'm trying to keep my back vertical the whole time. So come up on your toes. Bend your knees out over your toes. Notice how I'm not leaning my torso forward. So I'm trying to keep my torso back and heels down. Then slide up the wall behind you. One more time like that. Come up on your toes. Bend your knees out over your toes, heels reach down, and come up. And then reverse directions. Bend your knees out over your toes. Again, back is sliding down the wall, heels in and up, an imaginary wall. Come up, 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 relax the top of your shoulders, hold it there, and lower your heels down. Bend your knees out over your toes, heels in and up. So this is relaxing the neck and shoulders, just learning to use your ankles and your feet and reach the heels down. One more time, bend your knees, 
knees as wide as your toes, heels come in and up, come up, push through the ball of that big toe, use it, and then reach your heels down, shake out your arms. Okay, if you have a block, go ahead and hold it. Otherwise, your arms, actually this, this can work well without a block because the block is a little bit narrow um, for most people's shoulders. So if you have something else that's shoulder distance, go for it. Otherwise, nothing is fine as well. So from here, we're, we're palms are faced together and I'm just going straight up, shoulder height, just like this. And my palms face each other. My shoulders are just rotating right around the shoulder joint. So many of these warm-up exercises are meant to re-educate your joints, your brain and your joints about what is actually moving, what has to move, what can hold still. So for example, here, you just need your arms to move. Your rib cage does not need to move. Your pelvis does not need to move, right? Your feet are still pushing evenly down into the floor. There's no weight shift here. I'm just pivoting around the shoulder joint, which is so simple. And yet for a lot of us is like very revolutionary to just pivot around that shoulder joint. Shoulder blades are still on my rib cage. They're not sliding forward. They're not lifting up toward my ears. They're just pivoting. That's all that's happening. Okay, then straight out from the face. My elbows bend out and I'm coming straight out, right? Just like that. And again, I'm trying to hold everything still, holding my abdominals still, holding my rib cage still. The weight on my feet should not be shifting. It's just the arms moving. The top of the shoulders are relaxed. Palms are facing each other. My hands are about the same distance the whole time as I press in and out. If you're holding something, that is obvious, but... If you're not, you'll just have to pretend your hands are the same distance the whole time. And you keep going. And again, we go a little longer than you would on your own. So we go five, four, a little bit faster, three, two, one. Okay, and now straight up overhead. A lot of people's shoulders bother them when they take their arms overhead, and particularly when you're lifting weights, right? What's that? You can't see my body. Oh, you can't, oh, uh-oh, okay. Well, I can't do anything about that at the moment, but, but keep taking your arms up overhead. Oh dear, okay. So my recording device, they cannot see the top half of my body. All right, here we go. Yes, last one, you got it. You're doing the right thing anyway. <laughs> and enough. Okay, so now squats, take your feet, hip distance apart, turn your heels in a little bit, sit low, right? Sit, sit, sit low. Now I'm gonna show you from the, my arms are just doing whatever. They're not on my knees. They're up somewhere, out to the sides or holding one fist loosely. I'm gonna show you from the side as well, okay? So that you can see, I'm sitting low. I'm not leaning my torso forward in this case. There are some squats we do like that. I'm trying to come upright. Okay, but I'm also trying to sit my hips down low. Now here's what we're gonna work on, particularly today, is sitting back. So not going this way with my knees. See, my knees are trying to head toward my toes there. I'm trying to take them back. It's a subtle shift, but I'm trying to lean into my heels. Okay, so from there, we just come back up. That's our really basic squat. Sitting low, trying to get your weight into your heels, trying to get your butt back behind you. Keep going. And then feel the weight in both feet. And notice if you're shifting left to right. A lot of times we do when we squat, we kind of do a little left right thing or a right left thing. So keep pushing evenly into your feet as you sit low. You're trying to get to where the hips are level with the knees. That's how low we're going, if we can get there. Sometimes it takes a little warming up, so we'll do two more. That's just our basic squat, right? It's a great way to warm up. Good, and come up. Squats bother your knees. You can always do little baby squats, right? So more about the sitting back than the knees. So I'm sitting back and up. So you can just practice that, because that's a good action, sitting back. But look, my knees are barely bending. I'm more trying to hinge at the hips and rock my weight back into my heels. And that is a good practice generally
for loading the hamstrings. You're starting to load your low back muscles, it's true, but it's teaching you, it's teaching you some of the actions we're gonna need in a moment, right? So that is a leaning back and back up. Okay, so now, single leg balance. We do a lot of different single leg balances in creative core. Our most basic one looks like this. Sometimes when you're in class, you get to hold on to the TRX straps and that's really nice, um, but you're at home, so you don't have that. But you might have a chair nearby or you might have a windowsill you could use, um, or you can just go for it. It is easier to balance on a hardwood floor, right? It's having soft, fluffy carpet under you will make it more challenging, but challenging is not bad. Um, just, just don't beat yourself up, okay? <laughs> so standing on your right leg, take your left knee up. We're trying to get that knee up above the hip. So not down here, but actually lift, lift, lift. And then really stand into your supporting leg. Hug that outer hip muscle in, push down into the sole of the foot, the whole foot, right? The big toe right in front of the heel, get those anchored. Okay, then nice and slow, start to lean your torso forward and your leg goes back. And again, so if you need to hold on to something for balance, you could hold on to a chair loosely. You can also get to here and realize, whoa, I'm gonna fall over, that's fine, just touch down. Right, you could bend your standing leg to touch down, that's all fine. All right, but that's our basic position right there, is just floating. And then we come back slowly. At first when you're doing this, both knees might bend a little bit as you come back up. And then, yes, of course, the lifting leg is definitely bending and you get it up above your hip. Then again, nice and slow. We're just gonna do three today. Going back, extending out through the head, trying to push into that standing leg, nice balance. Relax your neck and shoulders. And then coming back up and through, open the top of the chest. Find your balance in the standing leg. And one more time reaching that leg back, open the collarbones, use your low abdominal muscles to help support your low back there. And you're just coming to an easy extension, nothing too fancy. And back up, getting that knee above your hip and place the leg down. Okay, second side, knee comes up above the hip, pause there, get your outer hip to fire, right? Find that glute muscle, see if you can get the butt to help you. There's a strong pillar, just working on that single leg balance, relaxing the shoulders, even relax your wrists. Some people try to really grip for balance. You can even relax your toes a little bit. And then we'll go straight back. This first one is really slow, really slow. Working on the balance, feel the sole of your foot. I love how a lot of times when we notice the sole of our foot, it actually knocks us over, but that's okay. It's a good practice. And then coming slowly back up, we bend that knee through and lift up, 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 up. And then again, back. We go a little bit faster the second and third time. But this should be working your foot and your ankle, especially at first if you've never done this before. Those can be uh, screaming with effort, but that goes away really quickly. If you do this exercise a couple times a week, maybe after two weeks, the effort will shift and you'll start to feel more your butt muscles and your leg muscles working. The ankles will give up a little bit in a good way. Lift your knee and then release. Okay, so that's our basic standing pose. Now we end up taking that into some other things later, like lunges, okay? So I'm gonna face the top of my mat so that you can see me from the side but make sure you have enough room behind you to step back. So your feet are pointing straight forward. You can get into a lunge any old way, but why not start practicing the way we're gonna do it in our flows in the next level class. So you're standing on one leg, pick up, let's stand on the right leg, pick up your left leg, and you start to bend your standing leg and slowly take that foot back. So again, you could do that fast. You could hold on to a chair to work on that balance. But once you're back there, we're gonna work on this front leg position. The front leg is trying to come to a right angle. If I didn't take a long enough stance, then I, when I bend my front leg, look, the knee is gonna go over my toes. So I gotta reach way back there. So if I didn't get far enough back, I can just wiggle that back foot back. My back knee's gonna be bent to start so that my front leg can really 
get to a right angle. See how my thigh is parallel to the ground, my shin is vertical, and my knee is right over my ankle, not over my toes like that. So I'm back here. My torso is over my hips. Shoulders relaxed, looking straight forward. Okay, so from here, we're just dipping that back knee down and back up. I say just, but that in itself is quite an interesting exercise for a lot of us. Keeping the front knee right over the ankle so it's not moving forward and just dipping down and back up. We'll just do one more on this side. The back knee is facing straight down and back up. And then trying to step forward again with some amount of grace, right? Putting the weight into that leg and stepping forward. So however you can. So we'll try the slow stepping back again on this other side. Standing on your left leg, pick the right foot up. And it's a slow, controlled as best you can. I'm really using that front leg, bending, bending into it. I can counterbalance by taking my torso forward and reach back. If I didn't get far enough back, I just wiggle my back toes further back. Back heel is straight up and down. Front leg is at a right angle. So we're working on getting a little bit lower over time, okay? One of the ways to alleviate knee pain is to hold on to things like a TRX strap or chairs or your windowsill, right? So just taking the weight off can help. Otherwise, the, the thing for those of us with you know, relatively healthy knees is keeping good angles. So I'm not letting the knee go over the toes in that way, at least right now. I've got my weight centered over my hips, my back heel is straight up and down, my back knee is straight down, and I'm just gonna dip that back knee down. Five times, one, and my front knee is pretty much staying where it is, right? It's not gliding forward at all. Three, four, I'm working my back toes, my back ankle, and five. Okay, and then a nice controlled, if possible, step to the front. Okay, now one of the things we haven't done yet is any lateral movement. So lateral movement means side to side, and I like to do all kinds of different side to side ones, but the most common one we do is this skater pose. So we take our feet really wide. Um, you'll find out in a moment, if you go too wide, you'll get stuck. So there's a happy distance you will discover. Turn your heels in a little bit, toes are out, bend your knees, if you went too wide, you can't really bend your knees that much, right? So then you heel toe it in a little bit. If you're too narrow, then when you bend your knees, your knees are gonna be out beyond your ankles and that feels weird. And it's a lot of quad work. So find your happy distance where when you bend, your shins are more or less vertical. Okay, we can even help that out by bringing the forearms onto the inner thighs to push the thighs wider and the knees wider and now I'm just sitting back there. And again, I'll show you from the side so you can see my torso is leaning forward, my butt is back, my knees, shins are trying to be vertical. So just like that, okay? I'm not trying to be upright with my torso. And notice also how my hips are above my knees. So I'm not dropped down here. I'm actually up a little bit, okay? And my head is slightly above my hips. So from there, we're just gonna go side to side. So again, just holding that wide leg squat is a great action for the hips. Now, as you go side to side, stay low. Like you're sweeping your hips across a very low bench behind you, left to right. And you will notice that one hip may want to lift. With the forearms on the thighs in this beginner version, you can kind of feel the thigh bones not lifting. Like how you feel how the thighs are staying even action, left to right. One is not lifting more than the other. Your forearms are kind of holding them there. And you're just sliding. One knee straightens, the other knee straightens, back and forth. Just like that, my hands are easy, my neck and shoulders are nice and easy. And then back to center. Take your arms off, push into your legs, and come up. Okay, so now, that was sort of the intro to standing actions of Creative Core. The next part is the abdominal series. So we throw a little Pilates in the creative core. The Pilates principles being that we're really engaging the lower abdominal muscles along the spine. So from right behind the pubic bone, we're gonna pull that in and up. Right inside the crest of the pelvis, we're gonna pull that straight back, right? Those are the muscles we're gonna use 
on our mat for the abdominal series. So come to the front of your mat, cross one foot in front of the other, one arm on top, and with great optimism, see if you can lower yourself down by bending your knees, right? And if you can't, again, use that chair or whatever you have, even the windowsill to hold on to, to come down to sit so that you're comfortable. That's a good place to, to take out your knees. So resist that urge. Okay, so now here we are balancing at the front of your mat, heels together, toes apart, heels are up off the mat, arms reaching out. You find those low abdominal points, pull them back, roll onto your low back. There you are, right? Just hanging out there. So we can do the 100 here, pumping the arms, go inhale and exhale. And yesterday's class, the beginner Pilates mat class, I gave this option of having the legs in tabletop, curling the head and chest up as long as you can, and then placing the head back down. But you can quickly add on to this exercise by straightening the legs more up toward the sky at first, hugging those legs together, find your abdominal muscles, and maybe lower the legs, right? Keep finding those abdominals, they're pulling in and up, pumping the arms with an inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five. If all goes well, you could try lowering the legs. When my legs are this low, I now have access to my hamstring and butt muscles, but I'm also using my abdominals, and I'm keeping my low back down on the mat. So we're just gonna do two more breaths. Go inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, 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 lower your legs, take your arms up to the sky. Okay, so for the roll up, and again, in yesterday's beginner and Pilates mat class, I gave you even more beginner suggestions, but today, arms come up, head comes up, I just see what happens. If I get stuck, I'll bend my knees, I'll hold on to the back of my legs, and I'll roll over that way. And then inhale, legs stay straight, shoulder blades back and down, roll it out, 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 and exhale. Okay, so arms come up, head comes up, maybe bend the knees, hold on, roll up, exhale. Inhale, shoulder blades back, pull your low abdominals back, roll it down, roll it down, roll it down, exhale. Two more. So look, I could take my arms all the way back, but I got to keep my ribs tucked in. Arms come up, head comes up. I'm articulating my spine, pulling my pelvic floor in and up, and then exhale, pulling those abdominal muscles back as I articulate, lowering my low back, back, back. One more. Arms come up, head comes up. It's an inhale, and then exhale as I round over and stretch. Inhale, shoulder blades back, and exhale, exhale, exhale. Okay, a little knee leg exercise. So in Pilates, we would do knee uh, single leg circles here. We do something a little bit different. Take your right knee into your chest, hug it in. If you can stretch your left leg long, go for it, right? If that makes you go into this funny arch in your upper neck or back, then just bend your left leg. Otherwise, reach through that left leg as you hug your right knee into your chest. So notice how your right tailbone is tucking, your left leg is reaching, untucking. You're kind of splitting the difference between the two. Now, interlace your hands behind your thigh. Relax your front ribs, right? So we're not trying to poke the ribs out at all. Gently push that leg into your hands. Flex your ankle. And then we're going to straighten the leg and point the toes. And then bend the knee, flex the ankle. Straighten the leg, point the toes. So just back and forth. This is a really basic hamstring warm-up getting that full range of motion as you can. So if you can fully straighten the leg and fully point the toes, go for it. It's not always possible depending on what you've done lately with your hamstrings. So it's a good little self check-in. Again, soften the front ribs. We're keeping the pelvis grounded, particularly when you go to straighten the leg, try not to let your right hip lift up, All right? So it's the thigh bone is staying back in the hip joint. One more time, straighten the leg, point the toes, bend the knee, and flex. And now, we'll take that knee off to the right slightly. You have to curl your head and chest up, most of us do anyway. Grab that foot, yep, <laughs> that right foot. And then, so your left knee might be quite, yeah, you're still on your right leg. Your left knee might be quite bent, that's fine. Just hold on to that right foot. The right foot is facing the sky. This is a big hip stretch. It's like happy baby stretch in yoga, only on one side. And then, 
We're just gonna let that foot come back down. Straighten both legs again. Pause for a moment. Feel the openness of that right hip. It's a little bit let go, hopefully. Okay, and now draw your left knee into your chest. And at first we're just hugging around the shin, both hands around the shin. Hugging my left knee in like I'm trying to tuck my left tailbone, but reaching the right leg away like I'm trying to lengthen my right tailbone. You only have one tailbone. But sometimes I pretend I'm like a mayfly and I have two tailbones and they can do different things. And it's helpful to start to learn what it's like to have a tucked tailbone, right? If I draw that knee in or if I reach through the right leg, that's an untucked tailbone. So just getting familiar with your own body vocabulary, body movements. Then we'll switch our grip to behind the thigh. Knee is bent. The thigh is gently pushing into my hand, so I've got a little pressure there. Flex your ankle, and then as you straighten your leg, point your toes, and then bend and flex. And you will find, I don't know, I think the older we get, the more funky this exercise gets. It's like just to straighten your leg becomes this whole elaborate dance, right? You gotta like corkscrew the leg here and there and do weird things with the knee, but just check it out where things click and clunk and crunch it's a good self-evaluation, straightening the leg, trying to point the toes, bend the knee, and flex the ankle. And just going back and forth, trying to keep your pelvis nice and level as you go. So you're not tipping, especially as you straighten here, the left hip is not lifting off the mat at all. I've got my front ribs relaxed. Just one more time. Straighten the leg, point the toes, bend the knee, and flex the ankle. Okay, then... Curl your head and chest up, hold on to your left foot, right? Like you could bend your right knee here. Again, we'll bring your left foot a lot closer. Left knee goes off to the left side a little bit. And then if you can, bring your head back down. It's not always possible. Things can be really tight there. And just hold on. We're just doing this very easy hip stretch. This will help with lunges and squats as well, opening up the hips like this. You notice how you're getting your knee and thigh to a right angle. And then let go. And again, to straighten both legs out. Okay. So that's what we're going to do for, instead of single leg circle in our Pilates mat routine, if you're following along um, in your head. And so we're going to go right into the abdominal series of five. So you drop both knees in, hold on to your shins or the back of your legs. And we're going to start this first one by rocking all the way up. Okay. So you're rocking all the way up to sit. Yep. Balance. Heels together, draw your low abdominal muscles in, hold on to your right knee. Lean back onto your low back, but not your shoulder blades. So the shoulder blades are up, stretch your left leg out. And then we'll switch legs. Okay, so presumably you've done the beginner Pilates class, but if not, follow along, hugging one knee in and the other knee in, right? The shoulders are easy. The work is from the abdominal muscles. So I'm pulling in those low abdominals more from behind the pubic bone, from the floor of the pelvis, from the sides of the pelvis. It's like I've got two hands on the sides of my waist, hugging in, two hands on the sides of the waist, hugging in, and front to back as well, as I hug in the knee. Now we can add the breath that goes inhale, switch, inhale, exhale, switch, and exhale. One more time, inhale, Inhale and exhale, exhale and rest. Place your head down. You could always put your head down for any of these exercises. You could use your yoga block to rest your head on. Sometimes that gives people a little more access to their abdominal muscles. Um, I don't know, it's, it's either or, honestly. Head on the, uh, all the way on the floor or head on a block. I go either way. Double leg stretch, hold on to your shins. Curl your head and chest up. Okay, get way up there, push your shins into your hands a little bit, and then re-sync your abdominal muscles. Oh, I'm glad to see there's another cat practicing with us. Okay, <laughs> now stretch your arms and legs out long, and exhale, hug in. Yep, inhale, reach out, so this is where you could take your legs higher, and exhale. And particularly where you could take your arms higher so that your low back stays down, exhale. Inhale, so I tend to keep the arms higher at first and start to reach the legs out to challenge myself. And only when I really feel like I've got my abdominal muscles working, exhale, hug in, do I take my arms further back and I'm really keeping those abdominals hugged in 
exhale. Last one, inhale, reach, and exhale, hug it in. Rest your head and chest. Okay, scissors, hold on to the back of your legs, curl your head and chest up, legs up to the sky. Hold on to the back of your right leg. Use that leg, push into your hands to help you curl up a little higher, left leg goes lower. And then switch, yes, and switch, exactly. Sometimes the hamstrings are so tight, there's no way to keep your legs straight, that's fine. Don't worry about it. If you can hold above your knee, go for it. Get a little stretch in the back of that leg. The legs are brushing right through the center. Again, I could put my head down here if my neck is really bothering me. That's no problem. I just have to keep my back still flat on the mat. Right, so that's the only thing. I take my head down. I don't get to arch my low back. Last one, and kick. And place your head down. Bend your knees in. Okay, double leg lift, holding on to the shins, curl your head and chest up, get way up there, sink your low belly. So I showed a real beginner modification in yesterday's class. Today we're gonna do the real thing. So one hand behind the other at the base of the skull, legs up to the sky. If this position is quite difficult for you to hang out in, then you, like, like it's really hard on the hip flexors, uh, right at the top of the thighs, your thigh muscles or you're shaking, right? Just bend your knees. It's no problem, take your heels together, your knees apart. And then you can focus more on the abdominal muscles, which is what we're really trying to get strong in this exercise, okay? So that's the modification, bent knees. Otherwise, legs are straight, and we lower the legs and pull them in and up. Keep your low belly drawing in, keep your back on the floor, okay? So I go lower, 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 but my back does not come off. And then lower, lower, lower. Maybe I go even lower, but my back is still really on the mat. Curl your head and chest up, lower your legs, and hug them in and up. We're just gonna do two more. Go lower, hug in, hug in, hug in, and back up. And one more, hug in, and back up, and rest. Okay, crisscross, the last one of this abdominal series of five. Hold on to your shins, curl your head and chest up. Once again, one hand stacked on top of the other at the base of the skull. So I'm trying to go fingertips to the crease of the wrists. Elbows are a little bit forward, they're not opened way up. They're a little bit in my peripheral vision there. Stretch your left leg long, cross your right uh, left armpit to right knee. And then switch, go right armpit to left knee. Okay, maybe not literally armpit to knee, but try. Right, so curl way up there. Stretch that opposite leg long, that's it. And it could go up to the sky, my opposite leg, right? I could reach it way up there, that's totally fine. I could reach it further out along the floor too. In either case, my low back is still down. I'm still really using those abdominal muscles. And breathe. So we'll do one with the breath. Go inhale, switch, inhale, exhale, exhale, and rest. Okay. So that was the full abdominal series. Now, we're going to rock ourselves up to sit and do a little bit of a um, balance boat exercise to work on not using the hip flexors, and they'll do a, another psoas exercise. So both of those are to try to get us to stop gripping right here at the top of the thigh, get the thigh bone to move back a little into the back plane, and get the back legs to work, the psoas to work properly. The psoas is this nice big muscle that goes from the thigh bone all the way back to the back of the rib cage on the spine. So it's an important muscle when it comes to core strength and spine strength. So here we go, balancing, just like we're in the beginning of the series. Heels are up, heels are together. Push your legs into your hands a lot and just leaving your legs there, see if you can articulate your low back down and then pushing your legs into your hands, articulate back up, shoulder blades back and down. That's it, yep, you can use momentum, okay? But we're, we're working on not using momentum, but you can, of course. So rolling down, trying to articulate away from the pelvis, Push the legs into the hands so you have that opposition. Pull your abdominals away from your legs to try to come up. That is the tricky and interesting thing to do. Yes. <laughs> so you gotta pull your abdominals away from your legs. Try it one more time. Roll back. Push your legs into your hands. Pull your abdominals away from your legs to come up. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so now come back onto your back. Legs in tabletop. We're gonna, so notice here my knees are drawn into my chest. We're gonna start this exercise here with my knees drawn into the chest. That way, your back is definitely down on the floor. Can you feel the length of the spine from 
the pelvis up to the rib cage on the mat, okay? Keep it there. Keep your right leg falling into your chest and just let your left heel tap the mat and then bring it back up. So I'm keeping my heel close to my hip and I'm just doing a slow tap down, back up. In fact, let's put our hands on our low stomach just below the ribs and feel the stomach hugging in there. So just a little bit of engagement, not through the neck and shoulders, let those go, but just feel the abdominals holding you as you tap that left leg, nice and easy, heel close to hip, back and forth. Okay, draw that left knee in, let it drop in toward you, and then tapping the right hip. So that's why we do a little bit of hip warm up is to allow this knee to come closer because a lot of times when we're not flexible, um, or let's say we've done, we're really tight in general, the knee hangs out here and it's hard to draw it in. So we wanna keep that knee drawing in. If you need to, you could just gently hold it with your hands because we're focusing on, in this case, the right heel tapping back and forth just one more time and the abdominals holding still. Okay, draw the right knee in. Again, knees are dropping toward the chest, so you're really tucking your tail in this case. Back is flat on the mat. Now, little circles with your left knee. All right, so right knee is holding still. Right knee is holding still. Abdominals are holding still. Rib cage is holding still as I just make circles with my left knee. Nothing super fancy. Just trying to free up that hip joint. And then reverse your circles. So is your low back staying down? Are your abdominals staying hugging in? Hugging in side to side from the sides of the waist, hugging in front to back. Trying to hold that still without engaging the neck, the jaw, the ears, whatever, your toes. Okay, relax, that left knee is gonna fall in now, drawing circles with the right knee. So just nice, easy, you could start small at first, small range of motion, and then slowly building the range of motion as you feel comfortable and your ability to hold things, a little bit of engagement. It's not a grip, but it's not passive either. So there is definitely some effort. It's like I have little bungee cords from the front ribs down to the pelvis. They're holding on. They're holding my ribs still. These front rib points not moving, but my upper back is falling into the mat. Reverse your circles. We'll just do a few in that other direction. My left knee is holding still. My pelvis is holding still, one more, and back to center. Okay, now still with those knees dropping toward you, so a lot of you have done this exercise with a more advanced variation where we come out into tabletop. We're not doing that today. So today we're just letting the knee drop in, right knee drops in, left heel taps the mat, and then now you're gonna reach the left leg away, maybe not fully to straight, and then drag it back and bring it back in. Again, hands on the low ribs and the low and the abdominal muscles. So hit the tap your heel to the mat, reach it out. Now notice those abdominals want to pop out as you straighten your leg. Don't let them. Use the back of the leg, drag the heel back in. Okay, two more times. Tapping the heel, it reaches out. Don't let your back lift off. Don't let your abdominals pop out. Drag the heel back in. One more time. So it should feel really easy in the hip joint. There's very little top of thigh action happening there. Okay, left knee draws in, and then it's the right leg's turn. So right heel taps, and it's just stretching out. Notice I'm not straightening my leg all the way. Pull it back in. I could try to straighten that leg all the way, but if I do, for, for most of us, that's going to be really hard to keep the abdominals in. All right, they're going to tend to pop out. So just go right to the edge where I can still keep everything knitted together. I can keep my back flat on the mat, and enough. Okay, relax your feet and we'll rock ourselves up to sit and we're gonna come on to hands and knees. So we have one more little sequence to, to introduce that gets added in on Friday's class. The intermediate is sort of the beginner creative core. Friday's gonna be the intermediate creative core and we build off of this little sequence quite a lot. So here we are on hands and knees. Um, first off, let's just do three cat and cow just so we get a, a feeling for this articulation of the spine. So you go inhale, arch your back, look up, exhale, round, look in like you're putting the crown of your head onto your tailbone, and then up, look up the other way. Big inhale, and exhale, round, and one more time. Inhale, looking up, and exhale, round, and then back to neutral. Okay, so now you know 
I want you to round, lift, lift your upper back, lift your low back, tuck your tail, and slide your right foot behind you on the mat so you're, or on the floor. So you're trying to lift your back like an angry cat, and your leg is behind you. Keeping that tail tuck, keep your right knee facing down, trying to lift your right leg off the mat. Okay, so this is just to, just to get you to wake up those hamstrings, use less low back muscle. Now, take your left arm out, so you've got opposite arm leg lifted. At some point here, you're going to start to use some low back muscle. You're going to start to arch your low back. That's okay. I just wanted to start with you using your hamstrings. Your back knee is facing down. Back toes are facing down. Inhale, look out. Exhale, elbow, knee, nose, all together. Hug it in. And then inhale, stretch long. And exhale, hug in. The supporting arm is nice and straight. Finger spread, pushing down into your fingertips, into your knuckles. Exhale, hug it in. Inhale, reach long. And exhale, last one, hug in. And then place that hand and knee down. Okay? Second side, lift your back, right? Lift and tuck your tail. Then keep that. Stretch your left leg on the floor behind you to start. So you're not using any low back to lift your leg at all right now. It would be impossible, okay, because your toes are still down on the ground. <laughs> so keeping your knees down, toes down, keep trying to lift your abdominals, keep trying to tuck your tail. Now try to lift your leg off the mat, and they will feel your hamstring fire. Some people over-tuck their tail, and they use their hamstrings all the time, too much of the time, all right? So in which case, this is a good um, eye-opener for you, and you would actually want to use a little bit more abdominal muscle. I'm not going to say low back, but you will, you will use your low back. But abdominal muscles. Take your right arm up. Stretch it out. Big inhale, look up. Exhale, hug elbow, knee, nose all together. Inhale, stretch long. There you go, using your low back. But find your stomach too. And then exhale, hug it in. Inhale. Now use it, lift those abdominals. Lift them. And exhale. So you get all three working together. The hamstrings, the butt muscles, the abdominals. And exhale, hug it in. And we'll do one more. Inhale, reach. And exhale. Sorry for uneven side to side. Hand and knee come down. I never worry about that too much. It all works out. Okay, so that's step one of the little series that we do. Step two looks like this. Your right leg was back, so take your right leg up. Stretch it up there. And now step that right foot in and step it back. So we'll just do that twice. Step the foot into your upper hand, there your right hand, and then step it back, okay? And bring that knee down. Okay, so left foot, left leg behind you, step it in, and then reach it back. And step it in, like you're trying to lift it, like you're gonna step up to your hand, and then back. Okay, so we'll build on that on Friday. Now, plank pose, arms come out, tuck your toes. You always have the option of plank right here with the hips down, or I should say with the knees down. Otherwise, we're gonna do 30 seconds, knees up, and I'm gonna time us. Here we go, ready? And lift. And you come right up into a straight arm, straight leg plank. You spread your fingers nice and wide, you stay with it. There we go. Spread your fingers, push into your arms. So that's 15 seconds. Use your abdominals, use your hamstrings, use the sides of your waist. That's 25 seconds. And you keep holding and come down, okay? So that's our basic arm strengthener, but now we're gonna do the forearm one as well. So you come onto your elbows or onto your forearms. Elbows are inner shoulder distance apart, okay? So look, this is outer shoulder distance. This is inner shoulder distance, so double check that. Not out here, but in here. Doesn't matter what your hands do, okay? And here we go, 30 seconds, ready? And start, so you straighten your legs behind you. Again, from here, I'm in my forearm plank. I could just tap my knees down to the mat, right? If I got really tired, I could hold it here. That's 10 seconds. Forearm plank is a great way to find those abdominal muscles, draw them up to the spine. 
Find those muscles on either side of the pelvis. Lift them in and up. Hug the sides of your waist in. You have five more seconds. Three, two, one, and come down. Okay. Now, just the very beginner part of a push-up. So from here, because so many of us, we need to learn the alignment first and get the triceps to work. So from hands and knees, I'm going to spread my fingers. Hands are outer shoulder distance apart. Lean my hips forward, right, but still use my abdominals. The very first thing we're going to do is just that much. So see how what I mean by beginner push-up? Notice how I'm just taking my elbows. I'm going to face you so you can see. Oh, here. I'm just taking my elbows straight back, not out to the sides, right? Straight in, just like that. So we do five to eight, just that little bit of getting the elbows to track right along the edge of the ribs. So they don't have to actually touch the ribs, but they're not going wide at all. And I'm working on my abdominals, one more, and back up. Okay, good. So our last thing that we do in Creative Core is a 30 second get your heart rate up thing, like a little interval. And let's see, today's, we're gonna do the, the, the jumping. We haven't done any jumping at all or kicking. In fact, let's do a jump with a punch, that'll be fun. Okay, so <laughs> we haven't done any punching today yet either. And we don't, I should say, we don't do like real punching in this class, it's more like, I don't know, yoga pun punching where we're extending and stretching. So I'm just <laughs> reaching across the body and opening up that shoulder blade. So that's our punch, nice loose fist. You could do it with an open hand if you want. Um, it's more of a reach and extend. Okay, so that's the, the punch part, right? And the jump part is I touch down and up, I go side to side, touch down, jump. Okay, so that's 30 seconds. Even if you don't know what we're doing for 30 seconds, most people catch on pretty quickly. Um, here we go. The point is to get your heart rate up a lot. So start. 30 seconds, touch down, jump, punch, punch, touch down, jump, punch, punch. And I'm, I'm purposely reaching across. I'm doing a diagonal stretch with the arms. Open up those collarbones, reach, reach. And the jump can be really pathetic. It does not have to be an actual jump, right? I could just do a totally nice, easy thing like this. And I'm still gonna get my heart rate up right? Not actually jumping. And by the way, that's 30 seconds. Yay. Okay. Good job. Come all the way down into child's pose or a rest, a rest pose, right? So we use child's pose purposely to get the head below the heart. That doesn't work for everybody. You could do a loose forward bend. I like to do this pose to test the flexibility of my knees my low back, my hips, and it's calming. And the point is to let the heart rate now really drop back down. So you do this big interval, this big push of blood through the heart, breath in the lungs, and then you let it all back up. Basically, all that blood backs up, and now your heart is getting stronger, having to push that big volume of blood through it's the opposite of, quote, a cool down, right? It's like, instead of doing a slow cool down, you go all out and then you just stop. And it helps build heart rate resiliency. Okay, and then stretching the arms out in front of you will go into a nice, easy downward facing dog. So I've got my fingers spread. I'm just walking back through my heels. I can bend my knees a lot. It doesn't have to be a very fancy down dog. I'm really just taking this to stretch one leg and then the other leg. And then I'll walk my hands and feet together into a nice, easy standing forward bend. So my head is still below my heart. Good reset for the nervous system, for the vagus nerve. And lift my low abdominals a little bit, particularly if you're more flexible, you want to get a little space in the front of those hip joints. Still bending the knees, I could have my knees bent a lot, right? If my low back is tight, if my hamstrings are tight. And then, in fact, we will all bend our knees. Bring your elbows to your knees, sitting back again in the skier's pose. Now your head is level with your heart. Start engaging your leg muscles a bit. That'll keep you from getting dizzy as you come to stand up. And then we will push in the legs and come to stand. 
Take a big inhale, stretch up, and exhale, hands to your sides. And that's it. That was our intro to creative core. Yay, thanks for joining me.